Bring the letters? Tomorrow for sure. Tomorrow? Hilliard's got a 3 o'clock over at the Senate office building. I'll be in and out of his files in 10 minutes, tops. Just the correspondence between Hilliard and the general. That's all I need. And that's what you'll get. Enough to bury him both. OK, guy? For God's sake, be careful. What's the worst that could happen? They could kill you. No, no, I never intimated that Dale Richmond had any uh, mental problem. Under a strain, yes. Overly conscientious, perhaps. And somewhat confused. But I've raised no question about Dale's uh, sanity or his contribution to Transicon. Of course he's not raising any questions about Dale's sanity. That's why he mentioned it only 12 times in the last 30 seconds. Can you believe that I actually encouraged Dale to go public with this thing? I thought it would be patriotic. Like shooting yourself in the foot. It's called idealism, Louise. It's stupid. It was stupid of me to think that anyone would take Dale's word against Transicon. Against the U.S. Army. My God, Alex, you should see what they've done to him. The company fires him. The press calls him a whistleblower. We get crank calls at all hours. He hasn't slept in weeks. Here, let me help you with that. Does he have proof, Louise? Does he have the goods? We have the company billing slips, and we have the army authorizations to increase the costs. What doesn't he have? Well, we don't have the actual correspondence between Hilliard and General Wershing. He was supposed to get it today, but... Someone let him down, Alex. The memos are there. And you need the memos to tie Wishing to Hilliard. And you want me to get them for you? Well, to get them for us or to help us get them, whatever it takes to... Alex, we're on in one minute. Be right with you, Joni. Tell Dale that he's booked himself an act. Oh, Alex. Oh, my gosh, I'm sorry I uh, wiped out your carnation. Oh, don't worry about it. I didn't like white anyway. <laughs> Is she pretty? Is who pretty? Your new assistant. Oh, Joni? Yeah, sure. Not nearly as pretty as one I can remember. Boy, was she a knockout. Listen, after the show, I've got to do a quick appearance for the diplomatic corps. Will you two be up late? As long as it takes, Alex. I'll see you then. <laughs> I see an image. A dog. A French poodle, of course. <laughs> Named Fido? No. No such ordinary name for such an extraordinary animal. Of course. Fado. After the master. This is mon bravo, monsieur. Merci, madame. Mr. Black. 
Senator. Would you excuse me, please? Yes. Senator, Senator Garrity, it's been quite a while. It certainly has. And I'd like to thank you for trotting down here and entertaining the diplomatic community. I certainly enjoyed myself. My pleasure. Someone asked to meet you. Uh, well, I really don't have the time. So. General Wershing will be mighty, mighty disappointed. Wershing? You know the man? No, but I would very much like to. Right this way. General, I'd like to meet Alexander Black. Alex, General Ellis Wershing. General? His aide, Major Madeline Crawford. Major? How do you do? Is the Army recruiting, or is this top secret, Major? If you're fishing, Senator Garrity, try the Potomac. <laughs> Spunky, that's how they grow them in the motor pool. <laughs> General, Alex? Well, congratulations on your little show, Mr. Black. I don't care for magic, but some seem to like it. You're too kind. No, sir, just direct. If something needs to be said, I say it, straight out. I have put 40 years in the military. Your friend Richmond is not going to spit on that record. Is that what this is about, Dale Richmond? I don't know how you are hooked into this witch hunt or how it concerns you. It concerns me because it concerns Dale. As you seem to already know, he is my friend. Then you'd better give some thought to that friendship. Because if you come against me, you're in for a short walk in a very large minefield. You make that threat seem almost irresistible. If I were you, I'd take it seriously. Will you have the car brought round, Major? I already know I was a friend of Dale's. I haven't seen him in years. But you talked to his wife just before curtain time tonight. Incidental intelligence. Just something we aides pick up around the water cooler. How does a civilian buy equal time? A civilian might try showing up at the barracks riding club at 0530 tomorrow. Assuming that the civilian rides, of course. 0530. That's AM, Mr. Black. Two forty-five a.m. Alexander Black, Red Eldorado, Rental D.C. License seven seven three, Delgado out. Dale, Dale, it's good to see you. He's still out there. That damn Delgado never lets up. Thanks again, Alex. Dale's pretty edgy right now. The federal marshal started parking across the street instead of down the block. They follow me everywhere except into the bathroom. They follow you too, Louise? Like to the theater? I was talking to Wershing tonight. He knew all Wait. about us. You were talking to him? About me? What did he say? <laughs> it's no military secret, Dale, that you're not exactly his favorite boy. It's almost 3 o'clock. If it's another one of those calls, if Dale... It is. I'll handle it. I hope I didn't wreck anything. I mean, if the federal marshal knows that you're helping... Oh, so... don't worry about it. I'll be there. Louise? We did it! That was Billy Maddox. <laughs> He's got it. He's got the whole file. I'm meeting him in 20 minutes. Where? Just off the beltway. Alex, thanks for your offer How for helping. How are you going to get there? By car. Delgado. The car's in the garage, and he's right out front. Well, we should do something about that. Uh, where's your kitchen? Well, what do you well, want with First, we've got to plug in the coffee maker. Isn't it kind of late to be going out, Mrs. Richmond? Alex, is she gone yet? Uh, no, I caught her. I caught her. Lou. <laughs> uh, Dale said to make it buffered aspen. His stomach's starting to act up again. Hi. Alex, the car stalled. Oh, great. Uh, better open the hood.
Give it another shot. Tricky, these things. No, Mrs. Richmond. Alex, tell Louise, never mind. I found the aspirin. Uh, hold it, Louise. <laughs> Believe it or not, he found the aspirin. <laughs> Why don't you go on upstairs and take a rest, Dale? Mr. Delgado, Alex and I were just about to have a cup of coffee. Why don't you join us? You must be freezing out there in your car. Sure. Come on, I promise not to tell anyone. Not even General Wershing. Come on. Why don't you put the car away? I'll pour. Have a seat. Coffee for three. Come on up. Stuff stashed. You wait here. Let me check the place out. Just give me a few seconds, okay? Right. Free, kid. Got everything. And I mean everything. Billy, look out! Telling you somebody has been shot. He needs help. When did it happen? An appliance store. Republic Lane. Wait a minute. Where? Off Crane Avenue, I think. Crane. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. It's right around here, someplace. my 
car. street is gone. <laughs> okay, okay. One small detail you forgot to mention. He jumps. General Wershing always lets him take the fence. Wershing's horse, it figures. I wasn't worried a bit. You have a very good seat, Alex. I'll take that in the horsey settings. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's cut to uh, Wershing versus Richmond. I think you should know that Wershing has a report that your friend was seen by a psychiatrist. Insomnia. Oh, that's not the way it'll look to the press. More like unstable, unreliable, and untrustworthy. If Wershing goes down, so does Dale Richmond. He'll never work again. Look, Alex, y you have friendship. I have loyalty. That doesn't mean we can't level with one another. It doesn't mean that we can't try to cut the losses and, and help the people that we're trying to save. Mr. Black, you had a phone call. She said it was urgent. From whom? Hotel operator. You're to call Mrs. Dale Richmond right away. Look. Look at the index. There's no Republic Lane, not in Washington, D.C., OK? There, there has to be. See all these houses, the sidewalks? They've been around longer than we have. I'm telling you, there was an alley right there last night. Yeah, sure. Same song, second verse. All good. Now we've got to pull those in. Alex, thanks for coming. Captain Perry, this is Alexander Black. The magician? You call your wife and your wife calls a magician? Alex, somebody murdered Billy. He had the letters and they killed him. Not on Republic Lane, they didn't. I saw him get killed in an alley right there and they can't find the body. You check this out? We're not just standing here tagging jaywalkers. We checked his apartment, hospitals, the morgue. They can't find the body. Now, you get the logic here? No body, no Republic Lane, no case. Right, a prominent citizen reports Look, a murder. Just be glad we're not booking him. Now, be a friend. Take him home. Alex, I swear to God, when I got here last night, there was an alley right there. See what we can find. Looks like someone had quite a birthday. Oh, this is my daughter Maureen. Mo, we call her. Ah. Have you lived here for a while, Mrs. Uh... April Denise. Mrs. Denise. Uh, me and Roy moved in about five years ago. Denise. Denise. A name that echoes through the green hills of Ireland. <laughs> Echoes down Crane Avenue when she can't find Roy. <laughs> <laughs> but rarely down Republic Lane. Never heard of it. Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> oh, uh, would you do me the honor of presenting this to little Maureen for birthday? <laughs> hey, Pop. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. How's everything at home? Grab the bags, will you, son? The old bag's acting up again. It's a scam, son. Somebody's running a number on those kids. 
I always say if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, swims, and isn't a duck, it's a con job. Could be, Pop, could be. Uh, say, how are things at home? What makes you think anything's wrong at home? I don't know. I got a message. The building manager wants me to call. Forget it. I already took care of everything. What everything? Well, looks like we're here. Fans of yours, hard losers. So, uh, everything's okay at the apartment? Peachy, like I said. Ah! <laughs> I brought in my technical advisor. Oh, Alex, your hotel's called. You're to phone Mr. Wilkins in New York. He's a plumber. Ah, how wonderful to see you. Time, 10.15 a.m. Black is back. Puts me in mind of a con I heard about back during the Depression. A couple of the boys knew about this bootlegger who was trying to launder booze money. These boys set up a fake bank in an old building. Rented furniture, printed checks, the whole shebang. The bootlegger went for it, deposited a huge chunk of money into the operation, and when he went to withdraw it, everything was gone. Tellers, furniture, especially the money. Oh, a sweet little operation. <laughs> How much did you take him for? Me? Did I say I was involved? Sweet as it was, you didn't make the whole bank building disappear. No, son, we didn't. Never thought of that. It wasn't a bank building I lost. It was a whole city block. They're scared, Dale. They have to be to, to go to such lengths to smear you. By the way, did Billy Maddox swipe the originals or just copies? He said copies. That means the originals would have to be in one of two places. Well, don't look at me. I didn't do it, whatever it was. No, but you're about to. Yes, I'll give him the message. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. <sighs> Sir Alfred? Uh, yes, my dear. I am so sorry, but Mr. Hillard was called out. May we reschedule for, say, Tuesday? Ah, slipped out another door, as he. Shame that, because I so much wanted to discuss the possibility of importing your computer systems into Britain. But Tuesday, I shall be winging home across the beautiful broad Pacific. The Pacific to London? The long way. Love flying, don't you know? Uh, would there be a loo in these environs, my dear? Uh, a restroom? Yes. Yes, right this way. Uh, good. Uh, straight down the hall and to your left. So kind. Dreadfully sorry, but uh, the door was open, and I suddenly realized that one must be able to see the National Cathedral from here. Wondrous thing, the Winston Churchill entrance. His gallant life depicted in magnificent stained glass. So moving. <coughs> Tuesday, you said. Ten sharp. You can't see the National Cathedral from here. He wanted something in this office. We don't allow pets in this building. We never have. Madam, Zenedura Macrura is hardly a pet. The building next door is totally infested with them. Who did you say you were an inspector with? Fish and Game Commission. 
You see, it's the unseasonably warm weather that causes this biannual flocking. I don't see any birds. Aha! Oh, it's an albino pigeon. No, madam, it's a dove. Would you open the window for me? Yes. Thank you. You just let him go? It's kinder that way. Oh. No, 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 no. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why do you think that? Oh, might... closets, their favorite nesting place. Why, well, you've seen bats in dark caverns, their wings flapping in the night. I think that I'd better wait for you downstairs. Excellent suggestion. Excellent suggestion. Okay, Oliver. Time. Oliver. Oliver, where are you hiding? Come on. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> the Department of Defense is pleased to inform you that your application for employment... Who the hell are you? Did you spend the whole week there? Check the hotel. Celebrating your new job? What new job? Civilian advisor to General Ellis Wershing. You have no right going through my stuff. Call the police. Listen, you say you're a friend of Dale. So am I. You say he's in trouble. I want to help. Dale's been uptight, tired. You people are all singing that same old song. Friend. Hey, easy with that letter. It's mine. Like I said, call the police. Son, I know how tied up you are helping Lou and Dale. I'll return those for you while you're at the hearing. No point concerning yourself. The building manager again? A plumber? Little drain stoppage is all. Now, a tile man. Well, the goddamn plumber broke through the wall trying to get to the pipes. Now, what's this about a carpet guy? A little water damage. All from one lousy, stopped-up drain? Did I say one? No, 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 not just ours. The whole building was backed up, like the FDR drive at rush hour. Then why are they calling me? Oh, Mr. Black. Oh, Senator. Say, okay, now, I hope you didn't drop a dime in the meter out there. Senator Murchison just asked for a recess. Where's Mr. Richardson, by the way? Uh, he's parking the car. Oh, um, my father, Mr. Leonard Black. Oh, very happy, happy Senator. Sir. Uh, Senator, do you think I might have a few minutes of your time in chambers? Well, now, this new evidence you send up to counsel. No, 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 not formal evidence. Just something personal, I thought. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Black. No. Alex! Hurry, it's Dale! <laughs> I would reconsider if I were you. Okay? Yeah, I guess so. Louise, take him home, and don't answer the door. Oh, great. Film at 11. Uh, hold it. Thank you. Third floor, please. Where are we going now? Senator Garrity's office. Dale didn't do himself any good out there. I don't want to lose the only friend we've got on this committee. Son, this is the second floor. Oh. <laughs> Fascinating. When your mind's on something else, all the floors look alike. Wait a minute. Billy, we don't need public displays like that. Bad image for old Transicon, huh? Just don't do anything embarrassing.
That was a nice little public display your Mr. Richmond put on out there. Senator, your subcommittee wants hard evidence, right? Something in black and white that spells out conspiracy. Well, if Mr. Richmond's got it, let him trot it out. Suppose I trot it out. Republic Lane. Ah, Mr. Black, I, I don't have any time for this. Suppose I can put Republic Lane back where Dale Richmond saw it. If I can show you what he saw, would that cut through all his business about his mental stability? Are you proposing to put back a street that wasn't there? If you can wangle me a one-day adjournment. Adjournment? Come on, one day. You can spare it, I can spare it. Dale and Louise Richmond need it. All right, Mr. Black, you got your day. But it better be as good as your mind reading name. Big promises. Politicians are used to them, Pop. Son, what if there's no rabbit in this hat? There's always a rabbit. Now I'm getting telegrams. What the hell is going on here, Pop? I do not have time for Son, the... I can explain. Please, explain why every repairman in the city of New York thinks I owe him money. The police made me do it. The police? It's their fault. They're the ones who made me flush all the... I'll get it. That's all right, I'll get it. Hello. Yeah, all right. Take it easy, Lou. Take it easy. No, stay where you are. I'll take care of it. Just sit still. What's up? Dale's on his way over to Billy Maddox's apartment. You better call the police. Somebody here first. I caught a glimpse as they went out the window. Paid off. He said he was going to testify. Well, that's uh, just good buddies again, huh? That's why you brought the gun? That isn't my gun. Somebody else got there first. Yeah, but you were standing over the body, fella. That's not what I said, Captain. All I said was Dale got there before I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll him out of here before the cameras get here, okay? Louise will meet you at the station with a lawyer. A couple hours, tops. Hang in there. Dale didn't kill him. You know that. I hear you telling me. Come on, Captain. Take a look at my car. Somebody ripped off my distributor cap. Life in a big city. Well, let's talk about streets in a big city. Republic Lane again? Oh, no, no, no. This is uh, the sequel. Son of Republic Lane. Uh, Captain, this will just take oh, a couple hours of taxpayers' time. Oh, I know what you're thinking. What do I get out of this? about Maddox. Too bad about your friend. Hasn't been too good a day for any of us. In a man of your reputation, having to appear before a congressional committee under such circumstances. That's behind us. I told the Major that when she called. Sir, Mr. Black feels Richmond's arrest won't affect the hearings. Ridiculous. Nobody will listen to him now. Seems to me a good trade-off. Straight off for what? A few minutes of your time, an open mind against a 40-year military career. A bus, Mr. Black! You're talking about herd the United States senators around in a bus! Consider the commuter vote. General Worsen, is he going along with this magic show? 
Oh, yes, sir, he is. He's assigned me to help Mr. Black in any way that I can. He did, did he? Well, not that. But a bus, Mr. Black. Well, think of it as a big limo. <laughs> the meter is running, Mr. Hilliard. Does General Wershing know about this? He's on that bus right now. Third row, window seat. Along with the entire Senate subcommittee. Won't you join us, Mr. Hilliard? Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. If you'll uh, step this way, please. Senator. Ladies and gentlemen. Our scene is set. Observe, if you will, the campaign posters, the wrapping paper in the trash cans, the streetlight, everything exactly the way it was that night when Dale Richmond and two police officers discovered that Republic Lane had vanished from the face of the earth. Republic Lane still appears to be missing, Mr. Black. Not for long, Senator. Not for long. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll follow me, let us embark on a somewhat abbreviated version of Dale Richmond's Odyssey that night. You the guy helping Black? Yep, Leonard uh, Lipman. Have we met before? Not professionally. Now remember, this neighborhood was unfamiliar to Dale Rich. It was late, he'd been shot at, he was being chased, he was running frantically through the streets seeking help, disoriented in strange surroundings. When he came upon this donut shop, where he found a patrol car and two police officers. Now the police officers had never heard of Republic Lane. Crane Avenue, they knew. Let us imagine that this second bus is the patrol car. And let us return with Dale Richmond to Republic Lane. One heck of a yarn, won't it? Ladies and gentlemen, Republic Lane. <laughs> no, but clear. But there are people living here. Can't be, Jerry. There is no such street. You're absolutely right, Senator. There is no such street. Actually, this is Constellation Court. Let me explain the illusion. Right this way, please. All right. Step right in, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. We, we might be a bit crowded in here today. Then again, Dale Richmond found it a bit more crowded than he expected. Dale thought he was meeting with just Billy Maddox. He never expected to find a third person, someone who might have entered through this door. Dale Richmond couldn't know that Billy Maddox was co-conspirator with the very person who murdered him. Twice. Dale was about to receive the key information about Transicon, he thought, until... Maddox's partner made sure he kept running. That partner had already jammed something into the door lock to guarantee Dale was on foot, disoriented, far from the scene before he stopped running. The first shot was a blank. The blood 
was fake. Now, Republic Lane had to disappear. The poster and trash cans, which had been borrowed from an address several blocks away on Crane Avenue, had to be removed. What about Dale's car? The nail which jammed the door lock was removed. The car was hot-wired. And all that Billy had to do was drive it away to leave for Dale and the police to find later. They then drove back down Crane Avenue, where they returned the props to their original places. Now they could return to Constellation Court, pick up Billy's car to complete the illusion, which takes us, ladies and gentlemen, back outside. And just who are they here for? The big finish, General. Every good act has one. You're asking us to believe that Richmond didn't notice the street numbers were different out on Crane? He was led there, General, and then chased away. It's like walking down a hotel corridor. Unless you're looking for a specific room, who looks at the numbers? Who the devil was Maddox partner? Partners. There were two. The one who gave the orders was Mr. Hilliard. Like hell. I have witnesses for that night. And for the night Maddox was killed. And they're both your lawyers, right? Mr. Hilliard, I only said you gave the orders to your military contact. Black, you didn't get me here to no, make this... No, General, no, not you. No. But there was someone, someone who could offer a position on your staff as a reward to Billy Maddox. Someone capable of hot-wiring Dale's car and stealing my distributor cap. Easy for someone who started up through the ranks in the Army motor pool. Alex. Sir. You're saying it was the Major that Hilliard's been bribing. She had access to the same channels at Transicon as you. Wait a minute. When I told Madeline to take care of it, I meant that she was to take care of Dale as a witness. I didn't want anybody killed. Push a military button, Mr. Hilliard, you get a military response. Hold it! All of you. Everybody back. Madeline. Can't outrun all your mistakes, Major. Don't follow me. I shoot even better than I run. Just stay there. Looks like we've lost another street. should have been so lucky. Oh, oh, I wish I'd seen that. We must have done that bullet catching trick 200 times in the end. I couldn't resist it. <laughs> you see, Louise, Alex had already removed the real bullets from Perry's gun. Yes, I know. I worked with the best magician in the world. And not a bad friend, either. And did he tell you who it was, snuck around yeah. back and yeah. put the brick gimmick? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, he did. told you that. All right. Oh. Thank you. Goodbye, dear. Bye. Thank you. flush and what does it have to do with the police they were knocking on the door we had to get rid of the ev uh, evidence evidence of what i don't know why they make it illegal for a few old friends to spend a friendly evening playing bingo you were running a bingo game in my apartment our apartment son guess somebody got it into his head a few of the cars might be rigged right. so they called the cops and i clogged the drains with soggy bingo cards Darn little beans were tricky, too. Okay. How many apartments did you flood? How many more bills am I going to get? I've been giving that some thought, son. I've in mind a little scheme that'll pay for everything. No. And let us keep a little on the side. No. You already paid the premiums. <laughs> 